hello everybody, my name is Olavi, and um, I'm going to demo an app called CZ. I don't know how to pronounce it either. How many of you have heard about it? Okay, cool. How many has tried it? Nobody. Okay, that's good, because then this is a good thing to demo it then. Um, yeah, so cc.app uh, is created by this guy called Kitze in Twitter. And I'm following him, so that's why I have been like hearing about this app for a couple months now, quite a lot, because he's posting all the time about it. And he's, I think he's right now working full time on this app, and it's pretty cool. Um, this project used to be a open source free uh, project, web-based program that you could use, but as the title of this Medium post says, GitHub stars won't pay your rent, so they decided to make it a commercial product. So, um, yeah, let's first look into the, their website and what they claim the app is doing, and then I'll show how it works in reality, and I will be talking a bit about my experiences. So, CC uh, is a browser for developers and designers, so as you can see on the website, by the way, they have super nice videos. The release notes are actually videos, and those are super funny as well. And on the website, they have nice videos explaining all the cool features, but I don't show the videos now because it's kind of a waste of time. I will just quickly glance over the website so you can see some of the features. So the basic view is that you have the same website in multiple um, devices and uh, screen sizes at the same time and they claim that everything is in perfect sync um, let's see if this video loads yeah so you can see when you scroll they're in perfect sync at least they claim so and you can scroll to any element on the page you can navigate you can edit you have hot reloading of course, if your project has hot reloading. And you have dev tools, which is good. And yeah, let's see. This web page is actually not that good because it loads the content lazily. And if your network is a bit slow, then you don't see blank pages. And then you can take screenshots. And here is the pricing. Um, so solo is $5 a month. Three or three licenses, or three, I mean, licenses for three devices. So if you have three devices, you have to buy this device, uh, this license, I guess. But yeah, I guess most of us develop on one device mostly. And then, yeah, I think we could dive straight into the my demo application that I created. So I just made a I decided that this, like showing how this works, is best to sh display with a web project. So here we go. We have cc.app running. It by default it shows you the web page you navigate to. You add the address here. So it's basically a browser, but it shows it in multiple web views or multiple screen sizes and shows a screen. What do you call it? Like screen around the web page you can cost customize that so you don't if you don't like to see the fake device there you can hide it or minimize it make it smaller and then you have by default you have the iPhones first and then larger screens some Androids and iPads MacBook laptop desktop whatever and you can of course customize this so you can go to settings and devices and then no not here i was wrong mm, add device at least and organize devices so here you can edit them add more and this is nice actually that you have some prefets presets here so you can just select these and hide if you don't like to see so many iphones in the beginning you can hide them um and yeah one of the things they claimed on the website was that the, everything is in perfect sync, which is not the case, uh, at least to my experience. So when you scroll, 
it should scroll everything at the same time. Um, so there was the effect. It doesn't always, yeah, now it came. So as you see, it's not perfect, but at least when it scrolls everything, it's kind of nice, but then you can see, see the scrolling on all devices. And I'll try to demo a small thing where this could be probably useful for somebody. So here's my nice application. It looks okay because this is how I designed it. But then when I scroll down and look at it on, so I want to scroll a bit down and look at it on, the, for example, this iPad. I think the text is way too small, but I wouldn't have noticed it if I would have just focused on the iPhones here. So I'm just gonna go fix that real quickly with the hacky font size to rems change here. Let's see how it's reloading. Okay, so it made it actually bigger on the iPhones as well, but it's fine. And now it looks a bit better. Um, but yeah, you can fix it better as well. But this is just a stupid example of how, how you can fix stuff. And okay, so I will look at my slides now, which are this web page. So the good thing about this app is that it makes, makes it simple and quick to test on multiple devices, as you can see. And the app actually does one thing, and it does it quite well. And it's only, it's only focusing on this one thing, and that's a good thing. And these are Chrome web views, or yeah, Chrome web views here, so you can use Chrome dev tools to inspect these, and that's really cool because I don't know, I at least use Chrome, so I'm most used to using Chrome dev tools, and that's cool. Um, and it works on Linux, as you can see, I'm running Linux, and it has a an app image that I can use on Linux. Um, and it's customizable, you can, for example, as I showed you, you can customize the devices, and then you can customize the theme, so you can change the background color if you like. And then you can, here you can choose to not show the device frame and not show the old operating system and browser. You can show a minimalistic device frame if you'd like to. Yep, so now I changed the background color. And yeah, then let's go to some of the cons in my opinion. and. Please bear in mind, these are my opinions. And I have been using this for three days now or something. I asked this in, Twitter, uh, in Slack if some of us has been using this and nobody answered. And then Matthias was suggesting me to try it out and tell you about it. So one of the first thing is that it's an Electron app. And I think quite many of us know that it's a waste of memory. And uh, actually, yesterday I was developing this demo site and I had my laptop on my lap and it got too hot I couldn't continue doing it so I think it uses quite a lot of memory which is not good and as I showed you this synchronized crawling does not work perfectly um, and then one one thing I was missing is tabs so for example here I added a link to the CC app page which opens in a new tab but when I click it, it doesn't open in a new tab because this app doesn't have tabs. So now I'm here and I have to go back and I can't like just close the tab. And yeah, that's just one minor detail. Um, and then these devices are of course just emulated devices. So they try to use the correct uh, user agent and correct screen sizes and stuff like that. But of course, you still have to d test it on real devices. You can't trust on this if you really want to make sure your app works perfectly. And um, there are some quirks here. So if, for example, if I click this, I would expect all of these screens to scroll to the cons section. But let's see if I can demo it now. It doesn't happen all, every time. Mm, let's see. Okay, anyways, there's a bug that all of the other screens refresh for some reason, and only the one that I clicked scrolls down, I don't know why. 
I can't demo it now. It doesn't happen, but it happens quite often. It's a bit difficult to see when the refresh is happening. So for example, yeah, now it's refreshing, but it's sometimes when you're developing locally and you have to compile stuff and st stuff like that happens, it might take a while, so you don't, you're not sure if it's actually reloading the page or not, because you can't see it that well. That's all from the like negative stuff, but then there are some super minor things that I want to mention. Uh, so we're developing an app with Next.js, and I think the next Next.js dev mode has a bug that you can't have more than one tab open, otherwise it gets slow. So if you have this, if you're using CC, then it gets super slow. So I'm actually not probably going to use this, or then we have to figure out how to fix that bug in Next.js. Um, and this used to be an open source project, uh, and now it's commercial. Um, and there's no free trial, but there is a money back guarantee for, was it 30 days, I guess, and no, no questions asked. Um, yeah, and you should just go try it out yourself if you like. And one thing, just a super minor thing on Linux, the app image doesn't add the app to the menu, so I have to start it from the console when I run it. And then you can see some ugly garbage in the console when you're running it, which I wouldn't like to see. Um, and then I could maybe demo some of the features that I didn't demo yet, so which might be actually useful. For, so for example, you can flip all the, no, not here. That's the, okay, so you can change the scrolling of the devices, but now I can't scroll, yeah. So you can have a horizontal scroll or then focus on only one device and then you can look at that one device at a time. But then you can switch all the devices to landscape if you like to. But yeah, it took a while to change the layout. And that might be useful. And then you can zoom in all of the devices and then reset zoom. That might be useful, and this might be useful as well if you want to quickly go to, for example, uh, with the selector, for example, ID cons, I can navigate or scroll down to cons section if I have an ID. And this might be useful as well if you only, if you have a lot of devices here, then you can filter out devices. You can, for example, focus only on Android devices, only on desk, uh, iPads, only on desktop or something, and then clear the filtering, I guess, somehow, yeah. And then, that's basically it. Do you have any questions or comments? Thanks for uh, giving us a demo. And it looks like really interesting software. Where I see this maybe being useful is I've gone through a lot of design reviews recently where we're going through the product and saying, okay, how's it looking on all these different screens? And I think one of the disadvantages of Chrome is you can only look at one view at a time. Yeah. And also, at least for me, when I'm switching context, right, switching devices is sometimes not very obvious, but it seems like it'd be quite useful in that respect, or you're dealing with the responsive nature. Yes. And we are actually using a storybook, and we are quite, kind of missing this feature from storybook. It would be nice to have storybook display multiple devices at the same time. Yeah. But we can then, of course, navigate to storybook using this, but I don't know if that will look nice. Yes. I have to try. So, so I guess my question would be, do you, do you think this might be a better product maybe for designers, or do you feel like it's a much more developer-focused product? Like, where's the, the sweet spot? Well, they claim it's for developers and designers, but I would say mostly developers. When you are, when you are, for example, developing a site, and then you can quickly see how it renders on different screens. For example, if you would make something like this, what I, I did, I'm trying to have the color change so every time when you have a like full hundred viewport hates. So if you would make a mistake there, then it would you would probably recognize the mistake easily in here.